V-Carve inlays are a popular way to make inlays on the CNC machine. They use a V-shaped tool to produce crisp inlays without the rounded corners you find in a regular inlay using a straight edged cutter. This V-Carve inlay toolpath makes the process of creating V-Carve inlay simpler and less error prone. It creates both the plug and the pocket toolpaths, mirrors your geometry, and even puts the toolpaths on the right sheets. Let's have a look at an example that can easily be used as a basis for almost any V-Carve inlay you might want to tackle. As you can see, I already have V-Carve Pro loaded up. Now for those of you with Aspire, don't forget that the V-Carve inlay toolpath is available for you as well. Also, you'll see that I have a file already loaded up. It's called thankyou.crv and it's located in your tutorials folder. Now this file is made up of with some very basic things. It has two different sheets in it, as you can tell, a sheet called pocket walnut and a sheet called plug maple. We have some very basic vectors here, but this toolpath isn't limited just to text or a single rectangle. You can use it to create inlays of very, very detailed logos if you'd like to. Now let's quickly have a walk through this file. So as I mentioned, I have two sheets set up. If I look at my sheets tab over here, you'll see those two sheets are reflected there. And also in my sheet drop down, they're, they're listed there as well. You may note that my pocket walnut material is larger than my plug material. Typically that's the way that you would work is that your main piece of material, which is where you would put your pocket into to accept your plug will be larger than your plug. But this isn't always the case. You may notice that I've used a thinner plug material than my pocket material. It's important just to remember that you can use different sheet thicknesses in this toolpath strategy and we'll take that into account when creating your toolpaths. Also, I might want to point out too that if I go ahead and choose my pocket walnut sheet and I go ahead and edit that, that I've gone ahead and reflected the material name in my material settings. This one here, I've used the appearance of walnut and this will come in handy later on when I'm looking at my 3D previews of my toolpaths, just to ensure that I know whether I'm looking at my plug material or my pocket material. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click cancel. Okay, and go back to my design tab. Let's just zoom a little bit, and put everything back into this preview. If you're not yet familiar with how to create sheets, adjust your material setup, create basic text or basic shapes, there'll be some related videos below to help you along. Now basically I have everything I need already set up to go ahead and use my V-Carve inlay toolpath. One thing you're gonna want to remember is that it is a V-Carve inlay toolpath. So all the rules that go along with V-Carving or using a V-Carve toolpath are the same here. You need to have actually closed vectors. No open vectors are allowed. So just make sure that you've got suitable vectors ready for your toolpath strategy. Let's go ahead and jump over to our toolpaths tab and have a look at our material setup. First off, you'll see that our thickness of our material is 0.75 of an inch. I've gone ahead and chosen to put my XY datum in the center of my material. Now it's important to remember that if you decide that later on you're gonna to wanna to move this, that you're gonna to need to have to recalculate the toolpaths that this toolpath strategy creates for you. In some cases, you may want to move that datum depending on your workflow. I'm gonna be zeroing off the top of my material. My model position, because this is V-carving, is at the very top of my material. My, and my rapid Z gaps and my home start position are safe and appropriate for my setup. So I can just go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and have a look at our V-carve inlay toolpath. So before we start, we're going to have to go and select some vectors to include in this toolpath strategy. So I'm going to choose the thank you text and the rectangle underneath. Now this very top information is what's super important to understand when you're going to go ahead and create a V-carve inlay. First of all, we have our pocket depth. So that's how deep we are actually going to cut into our pocket material. We have our glue gap. And the easiest way to think about that is the space between the lowest part of your pocket and the surface of your plug material where you can fit glue into. And in this case, we're gonna have 0 0.01 of an inch. And then the surface gap is the gap from the surface of your pocket material and the deepest part of your plug material. And that the, all of those are illustrated in this little icon right here. So you can see that this is the depth of our pocket, we have our glue gap 
and we also have our surface gap. At this point, you might want to put a little bit of thought into how you're going to be removing the extra plug material that's going to be raising proud out of your pocket once you glue the plug in place. This might dictate how much of a surface gap you need to leave behind. Now we can go ahead and choose our V-bit tool that we're going to be using in our V-carve inlay. Now we'll be using the same V-bit for our pocket as we will for our plug. In this case, the 60 degree quarter inch V-bit will be perfect. We're also going to need to add in a clearance tool. Now this clearance tool may or may not be used for your pocket, depending on the nature of the vectors that you're going to be cutting in for your pocket. But most definitely it will be used in your plug tool path to remove a lot of the excess material away from around the raised parts of your plug. In this case, I'm going to be using a 1 8 inch end mill. I can tell the software now where I would like for it to place my plug vectors and my tool paths when they're created. And what I'd like to do is from the drop down is to choose my plug maple sheet. And we'll zoom out a little bit so we can be sure that we can see that. So having a good understanding of how a V-carve inlay works allows you to do a little bit of work ahead of time to set up the sheets that are required so that you have the proper destination for your plug. Now I also have the choice of choosing how I would like the software to look at the outer boundary of my plug. I can go ahead and have it cut out right to the limits of my sheet if I want to, and then I could simply just create a profile cut around that to cut the plug out, or I could use a vector offset, which would give me a much more organic boundary around the outside of my plug. And if I choose to use that, then I can go ahead and add in a boundary offset to create that larger plug surface that I'm going to need. In this case, or in this example, we're going to go ahead and use the vector offset, and the boundary offset is going to be a quarter inch. And we're just going to leave the name as it is right now, V-carve inlay 1. And we can go ahead and calculate that. Okay, now that the toolpaths have been created, the software has put us right into our 3D preview. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that down right now. And I'm going to go back to our 2D view and have a look at the result that we have. I can hide these toolpaths. So you see the software has left my original vectors the way they are. And when it created the plug, it automatically copied those onto the sheet that I specified. It flipped it left to right for me and then also created the boundary vector. So it had all that it needed to go ahead and to create the tool paths it needs for the plug. So let's go ahead now and have a look at the tool paths for the actual pocket part of my V-carve inlay. Let's go ahead and preview those. And we'll preview them one at a time. So we'll preview the clearance tool first. So this is that 1 8 inch end mill. So we'll preview that visible tool path. And then we're going to go ahead and have a look at our V-carve toolpath, and we'll preview that. That looks really good. Okay, let's go ahead and close that down. And let's go ahead and shift over to our plug material and have a look at those toolpaths. So again, we have a clearance toolpath, so we can go ahead and turn that on, and we can preview that. And you see that's going in and around all the raised bits of my plug and removing the bulk of that material using that 1 8 inch end mill, which is going to save me a lot of time in the end instead of just using that V bit to do all that work. Now I can go in and clean up that clearance tool path with my V bit. And now I have the plug ready to go. Now that last thing I'm going to want to do is probably to create a profile cut around my plug so I can cut it out of my plug material and I can flip it over and glue it into my pocket. Now there's one other part that we're going to need to point out to you is once you have that flipped over glued in you're, you're going to want to know how much of the plug is proud of your pocket material. And so in this V-carve inlay one plug clear tool path we've added a field called plug stock and this tells us that if we've glued in our plug properly and it's nice and flat and straight that there should be 0.26 of an inch raising above my pocket material. This number will be important to have on hand if you plan on surfacing your plug using your CNC machine.
So the last toolpath that we may want to consider creating is a profile cutout toolpath so that we can actually cut the plug out of our plug material. In this case, we're going to use the vector that the software created based on our selected vectors that we wanted to use for our V-Carve inlay. And this is the quarter inch boundary offset that we used in our V-Carve inlay toolpath setup. So we can go ahead and select that vector. We're going to create a profile toolpath. We'll start at zero. We'll cut all the way through our material. So I can just put Z in there and press equals. I'm going to go ahead and select a new tool. We may as well go ahead and use that 1 8 inch end mill that we already have been using for our clearance tool. We'll cut on the line. That way we're going to get rid of any extra part of the bevel that we have here that could be left behind. We really want a nice flat surface on the base of our plug. Okay, we're not going to add in any tabs, but you may want to do that depending on your machine setup. And we're just going to go ahead and call this cutout and we'll calculate that. Then we can preview that visible tool path and we can go ahead and double click on our waste material. And this will show us what our plug should look like once we have it all cut out. Let's have a look at a typical workflow that you might decide to use when cutting a V-carve inlay. Keep in mind there's all kinds of different ways to do this. So this is just one example. We suggest that you might wanna consider cutting your plug first Profile cutting it out and putting that part aside. Putting your pocket material on your CNC machine, cutting out your pocket, and that gives you the opportunity to test fit in your plug into your pocket. This is especially useful if you plan on gluing up your plug into your pocket while it's still on the CNC machine, letting the glue set up and using your CNC machine to surface off the excess plug material. Another thing you might want to consider is that a lot of our users will go ahead and cut the V-Carve toolpath first and then cut the clearance tool. This sometimes will eliminate any of the chipping that you might receive on any raised bits of your plug or small parts of your pocket. Now let's have a look at two of the warnings that you might receive when creating your V-Carve inlay toolpath. Let's just go ahead and calculate this toolpath based on these vectors and note that I'm using a quarter inch end mill as my clearance tool that obviously will not fit inside of any of these areas. So let's go ahead and calculate that. This is the first warning that you may receive. The software feels that there's going to be an insignificant amount of space for a glue gap between parts of your pocket and your plug. This may or may not be okay. If you think that it's going to be a concern, then simply go ahead, calculate the toolpaths, go back and delete the toolpaths, delete any of the resulting vectors that this toolpath created, and then make the changes that you need to. This is another warning that might pop up. And as I mentioned earlier, I had changed my clearance tool to be a quarter inch end mill, so it definitely will not fit or will not be used when it comes to creating my, my pocket toolpaths in the top of my pocket material. So what I'm going to end up with is a toolpath that will be empty. There's a couple things I could do in this case. If I really wanted to use a clearance tool, I could choose a smaller clearance tool if I wanted to. Or I can just go ahead and just use my V-bit right away without running the clearance toolpath on my pocket material. And you can see right here in my toolpaths that if I go ahead and hide my V-Carve inlay number one toolpath, that the clearance toolpath, that's the quarter inch tool that I used, doesn't have any result in my 3D toolpath preview. So I can simply go ahead and not save that out, or I could delete it. For any of you that in the past have created a V-Carve inlay using the various tools in our software, you'll see that having a toolpath strategy dedicated to V-Carve inlays is invaluable and will get you most of the way there and will set you up for many, many more successful V-Carve inlays.